rocking crowd you are. Thank you. Have a, have a seat. Because you should have seen the audience the other day. Yeah. Look, y'all are the last two standing. Look at you. Yeah. Had, had no idea you were still standing. I like that. Just completely, we can take the chairs away. We're spending extra money on chairs and we don't need to. They don't mind standing. It's sort of like a, we could have like tall tables like bars where you're just standing kind of leaning against tables and cocktails. Let's make it a party in here. Let's do that. That's what we should do. It's totally accepted. You, I'm watching these reality shows on The Bachelor. If you've been watching The Bachelor, they're drunk all the time on that show. <laughs> have you been watching The Bachelor lately? They're drinking a, a whole lot, and it's not, it's not looking so good. Some of these women are coming off not so good. And, uh, you know, when it comes to these types of shows, you, there's always a hero and a villain. You know, you always start judging people. And I'm sure they're all nice people, but it's just the way it's edited, and uh, people look bad. And, and I'll give you some advice. If all of your uh, castmates, if you're on a reality show and all your castmates are, are shying away from you, you're the villain. That's who you are. <laughs> if everybody's hanging out someplace else. So I advise you to start acting nice because it's really not worth winning $50,000 but becoming so hated by the public nobody wants to spend that money with you. You're by yourself with a whole bunch of money. Winning is not everything. I'll tell you that right now. If somebody lets you go, it's not really the right thing for you. I mean, these people are like trying desperately to stay on and you're probably better off in the long run by going, okay, they voted me off. I'm not, you know, I think we resist change out of our own fear. It's the fear of the unknown. You know, and also, also, if you live in a mansion with nine other women chasing one bachelor while drinking champagne in a hot tub with a camera crew filming, you can start to think that that's really how life is. Believe me, I've been there. <laughs> Ladies, back me up. Yeah. We get, we get so uh, upset when life puts us in some new direction, but usually it really is for the best. I actually, uh, this story, I always think about this when things are not going my way. I was, uh, I've had these fish, three different houses I've moved, and I had these goldfish, and I was moving from one house to another house. And the goldfish were in this nice sized pond, but where I was moving, I was moving to this beautiful, magical pond for the fish, and I was trying to scoop it up with a bucket. I was trying to get the fish in the bucket, and they were getting away from me, and they were scared to death. And I thought, if you only knew, I'm taking you to a nicer, bigger pond. It's a better place for you. And clearly, he wanted to be a big fish in a little pond. And I said, no, it's better to be a small fish in a big pond. And also, I think about my show, which got canceled. And I was very upset at the time when my sitcom got canceled, because I liked it a lot, got canceled. But it gave me an opportunity to do another show, which also got canceled. And <laughs> if they both wouldn't have been canceled, it wouldn't have led me to where I am right now. I'm in a great place. I could never have imagined being happier. I, was, I really thought a sitcom was a great thing, and then I lost two of them. And I also realized that one thing they did not let me do on both of those shows was dance. <laughs> before, Tony. You've been stretching. I was, no, I didn't even stretch. Oh, really? I really didn't. Wow. No, I just, I just went for it, and I thought, you know what? If I fall, that's what I'm supposed to do. Change. <laughs> it's, mm. it's change. That's what it is. I don't think you're allowed to do moves like that on a sitcom. <laughs> no. no. Insurance. Sure, no. Insurance, exactly. That's yeah. what they're thinking in the control room right now. <laughs> <laughs> what about Elton John being on the show today? What about that? Sir 
John, who done. knows what happens when he's here? Oof. He's a wild card. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, releasing this week the much anticipated DVD collection Dream Ticket with seven hours of entertainment and more than 70 songs. The whole audience is getting this right now. That. I thought, uh, yeah. Also on the show is uh, Lois Morgan. Of course, she's a 79 year old bowler we found in Frames and Lanes magazine. Uh, she's the oldest woman to, oh, you know Frames and Lanes. <laughs> F and L. And uh, she's the oldest woman to bowl a perfect 300 game. She's, she's quite, quite amazing. One of my favorite things to do while I get ready for the show, I'm in my dressing room before I come out here. I'm getting ready, and I watch the audience dance. I have a big monitor in my dressing room. It's <laughs> fascinating. And uh, so here are some of my favorites from the other day. Um, here's the whole audience. Actually, we had a cult visiting us that day. They worship Tony is what they do. We couldn't even get them to stop. Look at them going nuts like that, the entire audience. Oh, they love Tony. All right, she's actually... She's doing the Pinocchio, we call it, and you can't see the strings. When she's not a puppet, she's a very short dairy farmer. And then here's, don't try this at home, because if one of them gets out of sync, they're gonna knock the other one out. That's gonna end in tears. All right, this woman's zipper was all the way up when she first started dancing. We can't actually show you what happened towards the end of the show. She's, uh... feel it getting a little nippy around there, kind of a little, <laughs> little chillier as it was going on with the dance. But all right, uh, I, I can't thank you enough. I get a lot of great things from viewers. A lot of people send me some beautiful, beautiful gifts. All have sentimental value because they were made with your sweet little hands. And today I want to show you some that were made in, in uh, my likeness, uh, all original works of art. And I call it the, the Five Faces of Ellen. And uh, this right here, of course, there are a lot of dolls. People send me a lot of dolls. This one right here, uh, perhaps more than uh, uh, any other, really captures um, me. Uh, so, uh, this of course was done just after my collagen injection for my lips. And uh, I have tennis shoes on and it's, it's very, very similar to me. I actually would like this vest in my size. I actually do like that vest. All right, then we get, um, look at this one. This is incredible. This is, uh, we titled this uh, Ellen DeGeneres Captured in Clay on Wood. And, uh, and then we realized that she, it, she was putting a second L on my name, so we retitled it, What the L is This? And uh, now, that's amazing, maybe. Maybe the artist wasn't sure if I spelled my name with an one L or two L's and she just played it safe thinking, well, it's her dancing stick if it's just a one L. But um, that's quite something, isn't it? That whole thing made out of clay. All right, now here, over here, I actually posed for all of these paintings right here. This is, uh, all right, we'll start right here. You see this one right here? Get a little close up of that. That's I found this one. I had uh, actually I sat for this just after I had come from my dentist, so uh, <laughs> my gums were a little bit inflamed just uh, from the cleaning. <laughs> William Lamer, I sat for this one at, at an art class at junior college, and my expression looks a little tight because I was freezing, and uh, and I was nude. And um, <laughs> and then of course we have this one right here. And I had just found out that the, uh, about the gin shortage. I was a little shocked. <laughs> there was no more gin left. So let's, let's see which one looks actually most like me, if you just keep going down that way.
first guest except to call him a musical genius. Please welcome back to the show the one and only Sir Elton John. I'm just checking out what you're wearing. Just yeah. Because see, even though it seems like a black suit, look at the back and look at how the the, the zippers on the back of the. Yeah. Who makes that? Yoji Yamamoto. That's what I thought. Yeah. They make an excellent salad. They do. Yes. They chop it right at the table for you, Yoji Yamamoto. <laughs> um, so so I can't even believe it. I was watching you during rehearsal, and I was telling the audience before you came out here how you just I just adore you, and I I. Love you, and every time I hear your music, I love you. And then I see you in person, and hear you in person, and it just is even better than what you. Because usually people don't live up to their albums, and you are, if it's possible, even better live. Thank you. Which is. Yeah. And. Which is rare, you know. I mean, you go see people, and you kind of you hope that they're going to live up to what you expect from them. And well, if, if, I, if I'm not good by now, then I should retire. I've, had, I've been on the road since I was 17, so that's um, oh god, that's 40 years. As you get older, you should be getting better. You know, a lot of I seen Tony Bennett last year. He was 72, and I've never seen him sing better. So I mean, there you go. Yeah, but that's that's great, but that's rare. That's not always. I yeah. mean, I saw Stevie Wonder in the same thing. Stevie yeah. Wonder was amazing. And this is you said you were doing it for forty years. It's your forty third album. This is my forty third album. Yeah. That's. <laughs> you just keep churning them out, and this song is beautiful as well. And uh, and I know you're doing tons of press for the uh, for the album right now. And uh, other than that, I haven't really heard much about you in the press. Nothing's really going on. <laughs> um, what's no. going on? What's happening? Uh, well, uh, there were a couple of incidents that happened close to each other. I mean, we were in Taiwan for a concert, and we got, we arrived there after a seven-hour journey because you can't fly from China where we were before because they don't think Taiwan exists. So we had to go from, through, through Hong Kong into Taiwan. We arrived at 12 o'clock at night after seven hours. We knew we were going to have to go through the terminal. That's OK. Um, but we were just bombarded by cameramen and photographers who wouldn't let us walk because they were walking backwards very slowly. It was a kind of half a mile walk to the immigration. They were allowed to photograph us going through immigration, which took 45 minutes. And you know what? At the end, they, you know, they, they became abusive. I became abusive. And you know, one thing led to another. So. But you know what? I'm 57. I'm fed up with pussyfooting around things. Yeah. Yeah. They don't show the side that makes you do things like that. How aggravating. And you're exhausted after seven hours. Yeah, I'm and, human, you know. Yeah. I just, you know, we went. And it, it was a shame because the, the whole of the Far East that we went to was so brilliant. China, South Korea, uh, Hong Kong, and Taiwan itself. The concert and the people could not have been better. They could have mm. not have been nicer. And, you know, the, to show what it's like, between the press in Taiwan, they have this thing with the police at the airport where they can go through the metal detectors with their cameras, and they, the, you know, the metal detectors go off, and the police don't care. So, you know, flying out of Taipei is not exactly a security uh, uh, a good, a good idea, I don't think, because the, it, it's just weird, you know. Well, and I would imagine, like you said, you've I, been... You know, I, I'll give a, photogra a photographer any, you know, we, I go through the airport at London, the guys are nice, how are you doing? You got off a 12-hour flight from L.A., you don't feel very good. But, you know, they're human beings, they're very nice, they ask you a question, they take your photograph, and they go away. These guys were walking backwards so slowly, they wouldn't, they said, why don't you get out of Taiwan? And this is not the first time it's happened to people. So they just caught me at the wrong moment. And you know what? I ain't going to put up with it. Yeah. Well, good. Good yeah. for you. Um, because I would think that it would be really hard for you. I mean, you're doing, uh, you're doing the show in, in Las Vegas right now, which I'm dying to see, which is supposed to be incredible. It is a great show, um, thanks to David LaChapelle, the fusion of my music and his, what he's done um, behind me and in front of me and whatever. Uh, is, is, is I wanted to raise the bar. You know, we, we went to Las Vegas, and everyone thought, oh, well, Elton's going to Vegas now. It's the end of his career. But the whole point, <laughs> the whole point of going to Vegas and this beautiful theater, which um, Caesars have built for Celine Dion, um, was to go there when she had some time off. So I'm having a ball. 
It, well, it, I really, I'm dying to see it because I heard it was amazing, and David LaChapelle is, yeah. is a genius. But my question is, first of all, so you're doing it in the same theater as Celine Dion. Yeah. Now, who's the bigger diva, would you say? Is it... <laughs> like, is, did she leave anything in the dressing room? I, uh, <laughs> I don't leave any banana skins outside her room, but she's a really nice lady. I, I mean, I've met, I first met Celine Dion when she was about 14 or 15 uh, when she won the Eurovision Song Contest, so I've known her you know, for quite some time. Um, Everybody at Caesar's Palace who works backstage, and that's what you can judge, mm -hmm. loves her. Yeah. Because she treats everyone great, and she has that reputation. So as far as I'm concerned, she's, um, she may be a diva, but she's a nice diva. That's, that's important. Yeah. All right, but I have more questions about, I don't even know how, because you're living in the hotel in Las Vegas. I have. Mm -hmm. All right, got to yeah. ask you questions about that. We have to take a break. We'll okay. be right back. We're back with the incredible Sir Elton John, and um, you were saying that you're in Vegas right now performing for a little while, and so you're living in the hotel. Right. Do, what do you do all day? I mean, you, do you gamble? Do you what, hang out? I don't gamble. I just hang out. You know, I'm, I travel so much all during the year that it's actually nice to be in one place for two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried to go out shopping, you know, as, because people know I like to shop, but it's, I get chased down the mall by, you know, I'm 57. <laughs> I said to someone the other, um, to my friend Bob Halley, who looks after me, um, we, we were running from these people who were chasing us. We had to go out, out, out the back of Virgin Records, and I said, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm 57. I, I'm, 30 years ago, this would have been fine. Yeah. But, uh, so, um, I listen to records. Um, I catch up with my mail. I do some, I'm doing promotion for the album that's coming out. So I'm pretty busy during the day. I work out during the mornings, have a trainer, play tennis. So... Because I would think that that would be really hard when you were talking about how aggravating the press can get if you're trying to, to go somewhere and that you're always just bombarded. I mean, but mm. the fact that, and I know you love to shop, so that might, now, were you going to the Gap? Where were you headed? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been, have you ever I been have in the been Gap? I've been to the Gap, yes. You've been yes, to the Gap? Yeah, I've been to the Gap. Have you ever bought anything at the Gap? Only for kids. Uh-huh, they have My cute. godchildren, they have the best kids clothes there. Really cute. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Target? Yes, I have. <laughs> Because yeah. I, I know you're like... It, in front is called Target. Target, that's right. <laughs> it's very fancy there. And that's what I love, too, is that you can get any, any music you want from the record companies, but you actually go and buy... I hate getting free records. I go and buy. That's, you know, one of the things you should do is, is go and buy records if you like to buy CDs, and I do. To support, support it. young acts, yeah. you know? Yeah. Now, and, and uh, just, just briefly, because I don't want to bring this up, really. I, I'm sure you're sick of it, but we're talking about musicians and performances. Mm. Um, there was a problem with, uh, with Madonna. Are y'all okay <laughs> right now? I just want to make sure, because I care. Um, <laughs> I was at a, a, at a music awards ceremony in London, um, and everybody, the, the host of the, uh, it was, you know, taking, uh, as the English say, the piss out of everybody. And... I, I got a songwriting award, and Madonna was nominated in a, in a section of best live gig of the year. And, and all these bands that really work hard go out and play and, you know, earn their crust in their vans. And, 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 and I just thought, Madonna is an incredible performer, but if it said best show of the year, I wouldn't have minded. But there is an element in her show which is pre-recorded, and um, even though she said it's not. And I just said, you know, it, she shouldn't get... Even nominated for that. If it's pre-recorded, it's best show, like lip-syncing, you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I know she's not the only one to do it, and she's not the biggest offender by any means, mm -hmm. because most, you know, she does sing live and a lot of things. But my argue is, argument was, well, they say, well, she dances a lot, and but then I've seen Shirley MacLaine, and I've seen Liza Minnelli, I've seen Bette Midler, and I've seen Mick Jagger at 60 run around the stage for two and a half hours. I I think she's a great artist. I think she's one of the most innovative artists that have come out, but she's a, a product of the video generation. Mm -hmm. She's not like, you know, we were talking about, she's not a me, she's not a Clapton, she's not that. She's an entirely different... The 80s changed things, and, mm -hmm. and Madonna was part of that. She's written great songs, I have complete admiration for her, but I don't think she should have been included in Best Live Gig of the Year when it's, uh, some of it's pre-recorded. I just think it's wrong. Yeah. But it's an but amazing... But I do, I know, do I have respect for It's an amazing show. Yes, I do. Yeah, you're all friends, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I just, you know, I mean, me and my big mouth, were. and these bands... <laughs> <laughs> These bands go around and they're trying to and they're trying to learn their craft and their musicianship by playing live every night. Mm -hmm. And that's what you you know if you go and see a show and you're paying three hundred dollars a ticket, which I think some of the you should be told beforehand that some of this music isn't live. Right. Well, sometimes you can, you can, yeah. you can tell. Sometimes you know. You can tell sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I'm right after I dance, a lot of times I lip sync a lot of yeah. the stuff when yeah. I sit down. <laughs> well. Because I'm out of breath. Right? I just think if you're going to perform on stage live. You should sing live and you should play live. That mm -hmm. is the essence of it. Of live. Yeah.
speaking of that, we have to, um, we're going to go to commercial and we're going to come back and you're going to sing. Having said that, I'm going to mime to my next record. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> would you lip sync this next song? Yeah. Um, we have to, we're going to come back and we're going to, uh, you're going to sing a new song from Peachtree Road, your new uh, CD. We found our next guest while living through a copy of our favorite publication, Frames and Lanes. I just happened to be on the cover of it. I don't know how that happened, but she's the oldest woman to bowl a perfect 300 game. Please welcome 79-year-old bowling champion, Lois Morgan. <laughs> You lost your voice? No. Oh, it sounded like you did. <laughs> no, I have not lost my voice. All right. Voice. So, uh, why I is never that? lose my voice. No? Oh, good. No. Now, so you, you live in Kingsville, Missouri? I live in the country near Kingsville, Missouri. Oh, what's the My country? address is Kingsville, Missouri. Okay, and so how many people live in the town you live in? Well, the, the town probably has 200 people. Wow. <laughs> That's great. 230. And maybe. how long have you lived there? About 14 years. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. That must be so nice. And it's Kingsville nice. is how big? How many people live there? That's it. <laughs> there's a factory there, and there's a few people. Wow. Oh, I see somebody I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's so no no there's a bowling alley. No wonder you bowl so much. No, That's I the... bowl in I bowl in another in a town that's about 18 20 miles from me. Okay. That's closest. I, the closest store is five miles. Really? Yes. Wow. And do you mm -hmm. have chickens and cows and all that uh, stuff? We had horses and, and a mule and uh -huh. little things like that. We don't anymore. No? It's too hard to... All right. Well, let's, let's explain. I mean, I just take it for granted. Everybody's watching the show every day, and I find out they're not. But um, <laughs> sure, yeah. if you're watching the show every day, you know that I found myself on the cover of this yes. magazine, Frames and Lanes. Uh, and when I say magazine, look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three pages. And this is the uh, spring issue, I believe. Oh, summer <laughs> issue. So there's... You know, you'd think there'd be at least another page. You'd think but, so. Um, so I'm on the cover because I bowled once, and, uh, and you're, like, in the back, like, last page or something, just a, a quick mention, and we thought we should call you because I thought you would be <laughs> furious at me that I took the cover away from you. No, I Admit didn't. Admit it, you're no. furious. I, if I want to be on a cover, I want to be in a magazine that's this thick. Okay. <laughs> on the cover of Yeah, a, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you'll be on after this, I guarantee you. You'll be on, we'll get you on all kinds of magazines. Oh, good. All right, so then I called you, I found you at, yes, a, you did. at a bowling alley. Yes, you did. And then you hung up on me. No, no, that's not true. All right, well, you no, explain, no. what happened? The lady at the counter called my name and said, you wanted on the phone. I take off, I was bowling. Not really good, but I was bowling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went up there and picked up the phone and there was no one there. I was there. Well, I was going, we Don't couldn't hit. hear you. Oh. And so Pat said, the owner, she said, well, she fiddled around with the phone a little bit, and then she said, hang up. I heard that. And then I heard you when I, later on, I heard you say, no, don't hang up, don't yeah. hang up. Then I had to dial again. And you dialed again, and I was on my way back, but I turned right around, <laughs> went back. <laughs> and so, and then you said, this is Ellen, and I, I said, oh, H hello. Yeah. <laughs> hello. You were very calm. Ellen, I was calm. Well, you knew who well, I was because I'm on the cover of Frames and That's Lanes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. But, so now, you is this, how many times have you bowled a 300, a perfect 300 game? Three times. Three times. Three, three times. different tournaments. Okay. All right. And that means... I mean, I know by, by the word perfect, it means that every single one was a strike. Every, is that what a perfect... That's right. Your 300 is, is every single time every you're hitting, single a, time. hitting yep. a strike. It's not hitting, is it? Bowling. No, it's... No. 12 I know nothing about it. Strikes. 12 strikes. Okay. In a row. All right. So now, and what made you get interested? How long have you been bowling? Oh, my. I've been bowling for pro close to 50 years. Mm-hmm. So you bow bowled as a, as a young girl? No, 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 no. Young girls. When I was a young girl... You didn't go in a bowling alley. Ladies didn't go in a bowling alley. No. No, 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 no. Bad things. Go on in a bowling alley. <laughs> I got to go more things. often. I had no idea. We used to... <laughs> no, not anymore. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. But we used to walk by and kind of look in the window. 
<laughs> try to. They had the windows painted so you couldn't see in. Like what kind of things happened in I there? I don't know. They wouldn't tell us. I mean, you. <laughs> they just warned they you not to go said, in there. They just said, don't go in there. They smoke and they, they swear and everything. And now we smoke and swear. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the old days, they contained it in bowling alleys, and suddenly it spread. It was just a man thing. Yeah. We weren't allowed to do that. Right. And so the first time, did you feel like you were doing something bad that you went and no, bowled? No. The first time, I was in the Army, so it, there was a bowling alley. It was, I was going to school in, mm -hmm. in El Paso, uh -huh. in the hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a huge bowling alley next door. Mm -hmm. And there was, it really wasn't much to do. We were in the desert. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we all went, and there were a lot of cute guys down there, mm -hmm. you know. So we'd swearing. go down there and so, yes, well, no, 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 they were very nice. They, yeah. were, they were in the service, you know, they'd be very yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so, and were you good right away? No, I didn't know anything about the game. Uh -huh. No, we just went and threw the ball. You threw the ball and then you threw money at the people down there to tip the boys that, mm -hmm. that set the pins for you. Oh, they used to go set the pins. They didn't have they machines had, no, that picked no, them no, up? they had boys down there that picked up the pins and stuck them in the machine and... Put it, and then when you got through bowling, you threw money down the lane. <laughs> wow. And that's how they made their living, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. They, were they, what were they called? Pin, pin boys. Up? Pin boys. Pin boys. I'd, I'd never heard of a pin boy before. Well, no, you probably haven't. No. It was before you were born. I like it. All right, like so it? I like the word pin boy. I like Do it. Do you? Yeah. Because they have ball girls in tennis and ball boys, but I'd yeah. never heard of a pin, pin boy. boys. Well, they don't have pin boys anymore. They should. All right. <laughs> When we come back, I'm going to head out bowling at, with you. Remember? We went oh, bowling. Yes, do we you remember? One? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. I was amazed at right. myself. <laughs> we'll be right back. And Lois and I are going to show you some pointers. And I got good. Yes, you did. We're back with Lois Morgan. So Lois and I went bowling at uh, Burbank, and uh, we shared some. Uh, you want to? She shared her techniques with me. Sure. Is that what we'd say? Oh, sure, I'd say that. Let's see how I it tried. went. I yeah. really tried. I really tried. You tried. Let's see how it went. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> 
call people randomly, and, and you're just wonderful. Thank you so well, much for you. flying out here and playing with us and doing that. So oh, we got you some gifts. First of all, I've had such a lovely time. I have. Uh, maybe you don't need any good luck, but I got you uh, a shirt with, with oh, you on the front, me you. on the back. Thank and then you. our picture. Our picture. Together. Oh, thank you. And then we got the world's oh. best bowler. We got the trophy. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, how do I get that back? <laughs> Elton John joins us for one more thing right after this. Don't go away. I want to thank Sir Elton John and my new friend Lois Morgan for being here. Oh, and one more thing, Sir Elton John. See you tomorrow. Bye.